Question is from Andrew Beth. What is the ideal role that hit and list cardio play in a workout to maximize fat loss and retain muscle? Can you give an idea what a week would look like if incorporating those two forms of cardio? All right. So first, let's break those two down. So HIT and LIST are acronyms. Uh, HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. This type of cardiovascular activity is characterized by a short sprint mm. followed by a slow, relaxed portion and then a repeated uh, attempt at the sprint. So. If you're on a bike, you would go all out for 20 seconds mm -hmm. and then maybe a, min a minute and a half, kind of slow, get your heart rate back down and then repeat it. LIS cardio or LIS stands for low intensity, steady state. This is the traditional form of cardio that most of us are familiar with where you just get on a elliptical, a bike or a treadmill and you just cruise mm -hmm. for 30 minutes. Now, what are their, what are their values? What are their detriments? Uh, hit cardio, you're going to get better performance. Uh, you might retain more muscle from doing it. You could do less of it and burn just as many calories, so it's more time efficient. List cardio's benefits. It's easier on the joints, less likely to hurt yourself, less stressful for the body overall. So which one do you do and how much? Depends on who you are. If you are a, a cortisol junkie, stress person with lots of uh, you know low bad sleep, High stressed out job. You're already pushing your body to the limit yeah, yeah. with go, resistance go the training. List route. Yeah, go list. That's it's calming, it's relaxing, it's rejuvenating. Go for a long walk, something like that. Um, do it that route. Um, if you're super well recovered, if you're an athlete, you've got good biomechanics, so you can sprint without running like an idiot and hurting yourself. Um, hit cardio. It's, oh, and if you're very time, if you don't have much time, hit cardio can can work very very well. But it really depends on who you are. Because if you apply hit on the wrong person right. or list on the wrong person, you're going to get terrible results. Yeah. I, I think, too, like, you know, there's benefits and detriments. So it, it will put a little more wear and tear on your joints, like if you're doing hit cardio quite a bit. But you are stimulating that fast twitch muscle fiber response, which is, you know, something you're not necessarily going to get with list cardio. So, you know, just considering that in terms of, like, performance and overall function like it's a good caddy to and that's why you see a lot more athletes utilizing hit training but it is if you get a, a low impact type of uh, equipment like a like I, I use like an assault bike or, or something like that where I can actually sprint where it's pretty relatively low impact on my joints you know you can actually like max sprint and you can you can sprint without actually getting that type of detrimental stress on the joints uh and, and you know it could be something that you can incorporate but uh for the most part, it is something to consider. Like, are how well are my joints, you know, reinforced, and do I have that kind of stability to do it? You know, versus lists will, you know, be be another option again for your somebody who's like always doing high intensity activities. So I'll, I'll give you an example, a generic example of how I use hit and list for somebody who's getting trying to get shredded, right? So this is different than uh, the recommendation for just general health. Uh, how I would utilize. Hit or list. Uh, normally, if I'm I'm utilizing both hit and list uh, with a client, it, we have a specific goal we're trying to shred down for a show, and this is how I would use this. And again, this is generic, but give you an idea. So uh, it's eight weeks left until show time with the client. We have to present the best physique we possibly can. Uh, I've done my due diligence. I've built my client's metabolism up. They're eating a healthy amount of calories. They're stepping or walking moderately, which is probably six to 8,000 steps, maybe 10,000 steps, depending on what kind of job they have is what, what was keeping them at this point. Now we have eight weeks left and we got to get ready for show. And up until this point, I have not used any cardio whatsoever. In fact, while I'm building a client's metabolism, I have them shut down all types of cardio. I don't want them going out of their way to move any extra. I'm trying to build muscle, get their calorie intake up as high as I can before I reverse them down. So now we get ready for the cut. So the very first thing that I'm going to do at that eight-week mark is I'm actually going to increase their steps. And I typically increase about 2,000 steps a day every day for the week. So if you're at averaging 8,000 a day, I tell that client eight weeks out, okay, now I want you to average 10,000 every day. Now, that what that looks like is kind of like LIS. I mean, LIS is low-intensity, steady-state cardio is pretty much walking around or hiking. It's, it's pretty close to that, right? It's somewhere... Uh, walking around or hiking outside is is right between neat and probably list. And so I'm going to try and get them to just create more activity. I tell them, hey, you know, go for an extra walk with the dog or walk with your spouse to try and get those steps. Now I'm going to keep increasing their steps week over week 
until they start getting to places like 12,000, 16,000 steps. Now they're starting to, now they're looking, clients are normally around this point are telling me, okay, Adam, uh, I am, you know, getting up an extra hour early and kind of walking. I walk the dog an extra time. My spouse and I walk after dinner this time and it's, I'm barely hitting my, you know, 14 to 16,000 steps you want me at. I go, okay, now let's introduce hit. So now what I want you to do is uh, every every day that you work out, post-workout, I want you to do a 12-minute hit session. So after, and the, the, the theory and the idea behind that is that, you know, roughly 80% of their glycogen stores has been depleted when they've worked out. Uh, now I'm going to completely deplete that for sure by doing 12 minutes of hit post. And so then they get this great uh, fat burning effect over the course of the next half hour, hour, two hours until they reconsume and, and digest food. And glycogen is the energy that your body utilizes from carbohydrates. And once you run out of that, then your body burns fat. Right. And so the theory and the idea here is that I make sure I deplete that completely from somebody. So now when they are driving home and preparing their next meal and then even consuming their next meal before that starts to get digested and then converted to glucose, their body is like metabolizing fat to get them there. So that's the idea. So then I introduce, uh, and this is normally like hit doesn't come into play until about weeks four or five, like say we have four or five weeks. So the first three weeks, I'm just increasing steps. Then I use hit post-workout. I do that for probably two weeks. Um, that's normally enough to kick up the kick, uh, the, how many calories a day they're burning. Cause we've now in included in that. Uh, and now I'm going to start to add like our bouts of of like list cardio where I'd say, okay, this is our final four to five weeks before the show. Now you're doing your 12 minutes a hit post workout. So we deplete the glycogen stores. Now, in addition to that, um, every other day on week, you know, four weeks out, I'm having you do an hour of lists. And then when it gets to three weeks out, I'm having you do it every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of what it looks like leading up. You're to, ramping up to hit as the peak. Yes. Yep. So and and I start with hit before I do anything else because it's it's the less time demanding. It's only 12 minutes. I'm asking him to do that. Um, and then I start to the very last thing I start to recommend a client uh, when trying to get shredded is the hour long sessions on the treadmill. And that's just because I, when I reverse them out the other direction, that's the first thing that goes. It's the most time consuming thing. And the rest is more lifestyle and short 12 minute bouts for me to reverse out of. It just seems to be uh, the best strategy that I've found for competing clients and getting shredded. And that's kind of the model that I've used. Yeah. Now, now here's the, here's how I like to look at cardio. Um, I look at resistance training, lifting weights as the workout. That's when I'm training and pushing my body and working out. I look at cardio as a way to uh, rejuvenate my body as an act as a form of active recovery. Okay. And this is for the average person that I would train. Now, when I would look at them that way, I almost never did hit because hit is more of a workout. It's mm. it's it's more like resistance training than list is than mm -hmm. the, than the steady state stuff. So, if I have the if I have the if the person has the energy and the ability to push in a workout, I'm not going to do hit with them. I'll just do more resistance training. When I have them do the you know let's let's get recovery, let's do active recovery, let's rejuvenate the body. I just have them do list, and I, and I like to have it in the form of walking outside or things that seem to feel. Rejuvenating. Now, if I do combine the two, because the last part of the question is, what would a week look like? I tend to do a two to one ratio, uh, one, two list workouts for every one hit workout. Now, that, that I'm not talking about every single day. Usually what it looks like for the average person who's already fit and doing everything else right is two days of list cardio, one day of hit cardio. So that two to one ratio, because again, I want to, I want to minimize that high intensity push mm. because I want to save that for the resistance training. No. And I think you're right to, to point that I, I would totally not like do a regular workout and then hit even with, with athletes. Like it was yes. something that we would focus on, you know, now we're in metabolic conditioning. We're conditioning the athlete now to then, you know, build up their endurance and then, you know, like emulate it somewhat towards their sport. So if it's like, you know, a few seconds of like high intensity bursts and then, you know, slow kind of movement right after that, you know, that's what it looked like. So it wasn't a combination of both. 